Okay. The certificate of live birth and the DD-214 are your main stock certificates in the government. Okay? And they are stock certificates. They're holding your assets, and they're an accumulation of uh, your assets. Now, you've had the options all along to do puts and calls against them. When you came of age, you could have called your asset away. These are under a unilateral contract, a one-sided contract only between you and you, your male factor and your female factor side. You are the investor, and basically uh, the other one is the obligator, O-B-L-I-G-O-R, the promiser, the fictional, the female side, the one that made the promise in the marriage. Okay? So it's a marriage between... Uh, in this scenario, but it's a commercial marriage in this transaction. Now, you might want to divorce this one and go and get one in the real world uh, to put into this place. Not necessarily a real woman, but basically another uh, one to put in, okay? Because this commercial whore basically is uh, uh, bleeding you dry. And I'm sorry if people get offended with their puritanical uh, thought processes that they've been dumbed down through the ages on this, but this goes all the way back to Adam and Eve, the male and the female factor of the first contract. Okay. Now, what we have is the United States and the state after 19 or 1871, they became secret stock corporations. You can look up the definition of that in the dictionary. It's right there. And so they are a governmental brokerage house. They can broker the transactions, the instruments. They're not under the control of the SEC. They're under their state governmental and the United States governmental control. That's why they're a secret with the E on the end of it, stock corporation. Now, as a brokerage firm, and you can go and get some of this information from Payne Weber, uh, A.G. Edwards, uh, several of these other stock and commodity brokers out there, and get their pamphlets on puts and calls and about setting up uh, what transpires with a account that you have with them in the process. You deposit funds into a regular brokerage account, and that brokerage can basically utilize those as collateral for their day trading if they have the authorization. While the state government does have that authorization, and when these accounts, and that's why what Chris has found out is that these are basically being held in a uh, charitable trust account. Charitable. But it's really just a brokerage account. It's called a charitable trust. Therefore, they do not have to pay any income tax on that. 
as a final 1C3 uh, but it's a brokerage account. And see, they're hiding these things away under these false uh, coverings, these curtains, to keep you off guard from seeing what is really going on is that it's nothing but a put and a call scenario. You get a document issued from the state, a certificate of live birth, but it's blank. You have to turn around and fill in the value, put the fixed value and the given period onto it, and then put it back to your obligator, obligor or whatever, uh, your fictional person. And he has to buy it back. He's got the money. He has to buy it. I know this for a fact. I traded commodities. I tr- played puts and calls. And when it got put to me, I had to buy that because I was the one that was obligated to buy it back. So you don't need to think that, well, this may or may not happen. No, it has to happen. Okay? And there are three enforcement agencies out there to enforce this. But we've been looking at these guys in the wrong retrospect And on this document, I have them down at the bottom, the FBI, the Federal Brokerage House and or Bar Investigators. (laughs) That's what the FBI is. They will investigate the brokerage houses or the bar, the individual brokers. If you complain as you are the investor. Just like at the SEC. Okay, if you have a, uh, dealing with uh, Payne Weber, basically you go to the SEC and you file an investor's complaint against them. Well, for the government, you file your complaint with the FBI And there's the brokerage house and bar investigators. Then you have the CID, and you claim illegal, claimed illegal divergences of income from the account. When you look at that 3949A, that is exactly what that is saying. An illegal divergence of income. And then you have the Secret Service, which is the enterprise financial and forensic auditors over the governmental brokerage house accounts. This is all about brokerage accounts, bar accounts, broker authorized representatives holding the broker houses, brokerage house governmental brokerage houses. I tried to address uh, three different places that you would be able to send uh, the puts to. There are 51 offices of bar treasurers. There's a treasurer office in each state or they're of similar nature in each state, and then the United States Treasurer. You can turn around and do it, but you have to do a certified copy of your Certificate of Live Birth or Military DD-214. And you put it in to your uh, fictional person. They have to broker it. You're doing a put. You're putting it to them. And that's what the male does to the female. He puts it to her. 
and then she has to put out, make the payment. Wayne. Now, see that? And then the other, you have 51 offices of bar attorney generals. They control the yearly commercial account transactions, and they also hold control the brokerage, the yearly brokerage account. Okay, they're not the treasurer, but they hold the account sitting there, and that's why you go to the attorney generals, and they have a customer service department in their uh, attorney general's office. And you put, you take all your yearly receipts, and you put them to your uh, fictional person to make the payment back to you. This also for your yearly taxes, federal, state, sales tax, all of those. You would send them to the attorney general. Then you have all the U.S. and state bar courts, okay, and they control all of the commercial brokerage charges for, like, traffic tickets, commercial traffic tickets, uh, taxes, do other commercial charges, fees, penalties, etc. that are out there, credit cards, mortgages. And you would turn around and put that charge to your fictional person to make the payment to them. So like on the put order that I had Tom post up there, one that I had going to uh, my state, uh, I think I had the uh, certificate of live birth, one going to my state uh, treasurer, and then a DD-214 example going to the United States. No, maybe I had it going the same place. Okay. Yeah, I think I did. I sent it to the state, the examples that I posted. But I had the payment being delivered to me. And see, these, that certificate of live birth or that DD-214, they are script. Okay? They are a certified script. And you turn around and you put the value on there. And you put the time. And then you put it to your fictional person, and he has to buy it back. So he has to release the funds for that. Now, it can either go to you, or you can have it sent to a third party. To the court, to the treasury, if it's taxes or something like that, that they have you on. Or to uh, the utility company, or to the car dealership. You have them make the treasury check out to them. Now, the accounts that are held by the attorney general, and they're there for a year. Now, in some cases, some of them are, uh, the obligation is over a year. So those will be a carryover account. But at the end of that period, they get deposited into any carryover, gets deposited into our certificate of live birth or our DD-214 account, whichever one is being utilized in the process. Most cases, it's just going to be strictly the certificate of live birth. The DD-214 is set pretty much aside, and that's only being utilized by the Defense Department and uh, uh, the VA and a few other places that people have gotten into brokerage accounts with. But at the end of the year, all those dividends go into your master stock account. So now you have a 
uh, state or federal tax that's from 2005 bill that they sent to you, you turn around and process that in with the certificate of live birth and put on the back of it and make it payable to the treasurer. But you do a put order and you have that amount of funds then put over to the treasury. Now, when you get a full understanding, and basically until you get an understanding of these puts and calls, I strongly recommend you do not do anything more. You do not play with the calls until you get a handle on the puts. Randy. Okay. From North Carolina. You're going to have to listen to the first part. You've already missed about 20 minutes of this. I know I'm late. I'm sorry. Okay. So you stay away from the call unless you really understand what's going on. Okay? Because you have to know what you're dealing with out here, or else basically you're sooner or later, you're going to get hoodwinked right back into the system, and you'll probably be in a worse shape scenario than you are right now. I hope that this message gets out to all the other gurus out there. Rob Ryder, Rod Class, Roger Elvick, uh, you name it. Gene Keating, Angela Stark on her call, all of these other people that are out here that are trying to find out the truth. This is it. It's all about puts and calls, and then you will find this documented in the Bible even. Especially when you get to the calling away to where you are exercising your right to redeem your stock. That is your redemption. That basically the man Jesus was doing. When we get out and we do our uh, calling away, called away, we will send that to the treasurer and have them process that. We will also notify the secretary of the state because they're going to have to purge the accounts of all public commercial identifications and registrations and then issue the free man tangible ID and passport when we set up our non-interest-bearing, non-commercial account because we want to put our assets, the vast majority of our assets, back into the Treasury or at least open up an account there to where we can receive our yearly American dividends and royalties that are guaranteed to us for our life because we are an individual managing stock owner and director on the board of directors of these corporations. We're the electors. So we're on the board of directors. When you turn 25, you become an elector. At 21, you're just a voter. At 18, you're a commercial voter. You got to know which scenario you're working in. One of the guys was asking about doing some of this stuff. Basically, as soon as you come of age, you can start doing some of this. If you're not over the age of 21 yet, you should probably uh, have your guardian back you up on this.
because they're the ones that basically put you into this scenario to go to start off with. But you understand the system, then you can turn around and put these things in. And you can start putting uh, puts and calls, or the puts in, and the call is just a one-time deal. I'm sorry if I offended anybody out there about using the the terminology in the female factor, the male and the female factor, but this is the facts of life, just like the word F-W-C-K is a fact of life. It's an American word. It's uh, valid, used out here every day. And if people can't handle it, I'm sorry. You might as well leave this damn country because it ain't going to change. Get used to it. Read the definitions on there of what, and I put up some from uh, the UBS Dictionary of Banking and also from Campbell Harvey's uh, Financial Dictionary. The other ones that I had posted up the other day primarily came out of Ballantyne's Law Dictionary. You have to read between the lines, and it covers this to the T about that these the United States is uh, basically a stock corporation. And when it goes in, it talks about whether it's a government uh, scenario or not. Now, in several of your court cases, okay, especially like on traffic tickets, you are, and see, everything out here is done by will, okay? You are the testimony arbitrator appointed by your fictional commercial person. You're the only one that knows his will, and you're the only one that knows your will. So you are the arbitrator, a person appointed by a testator in his will, and you don't have to have this written down or anything, to interpret, settle difficulties between beneficiaries going out of the dispositions made by the will. And see, everything they have out here is by will. Any item you signed, it was a will. You signed it by your will. Yeah, hang on just a second. Yeah. How you doing? Yeah. A blurry entry both to the Okay. Yeah. Later. Okay, I'm back. So, yes, we're the testimony arbitrator. Now, when the testimony arbitrator comes in to the court, you make the interpretation of whether you are operating in uh, the commercial scenario or not. An arbitrator, private, extraordinary judges of domestic tribunal. That means you, your three persons, are a domestic tribunal chosen by parties whose agreement they are invested with quasi-judicial power to decide 
finally and without appeal matters in dispute between the parties. You're the arbitrator. That judge is not really a judge. They're an administrator. They're a broker administrator. They're there to broker a account, a charge. And you're the arbitrator, and you can come in and determine whether that was a valid charge or not. And your decision is final. But you've got to have big you-know-what to do this, okay? To be able to stand there. You can't be wishy-washy about this stuff. You've got to know what you're doing, okay? And stay away from all the codes. You play with the codes, and you're going to get burned by the fire. You are a sire, okay, because you are a board member. And the first four letters of board are B-O-A-R, a male hog, a sire. And then when you look up the definition of sire, a title of honor given to kings or emperors in speaking or writing to them. Then you go and look up the word emperor, okay, an officer. The word is synonymous with the Latin uh, interpreter, in, in, imperator. Uh, they are both derived from uh, and signifies one who commands. It is now, okay, get this, it is now used to designate some sovereign prince who bears this title. In America, you are a sovereign prince. I said this years ago. You break the word Amer I can down. Amer is a prince of a sovereign, of a sultan, of a king. I, individual, can, one who understands. That's what an American is. The American Empire, the whole of the United States, composed of the states and the territories. And you're an emperor in the American Empire. Board, the convenient term of referring to the board of directors of a corporation. Referring being in the individual as well as the collective sense. Meals, M-E-A-L-S. That's the pay. Meal rent, rent paid by a tenant in meal. See, you've got to look at these words in the dictionary and Read between the lines and see what some of these things are saying. And you're not going to find any of this stuff in the codes. Because the codes are basically like the curtain in the Wizard of Oz, hiding everything from you, covering it up. That's what a code does. It puts a cover out there to throw you off. So, right now, all of our stuff is basically classified as being held in an intangible status. But the stuff that is in our master stock accounts is really tangible. But it can only be accessed by puts right now. And then, if you call it away... Then you take it completely out, and now it becomes fully tangible 
just and real. And then you can de- redeposit it into a uh, new treasury account, a non-commercial, non-interest-bearing uh, checking account at the treasury that will receive your dividends and your royalties from the governmental stocks that you own. I don't see how this can be any simpler, okay? You try anything else and you're not going to get anywhere, okay? But a put, they are obligated. Your fiction has to buy it back. Not the United States, not the state. It is your fiction has to buy it. He's the one that's holding the account. See, we were sending a lot of these things in, and if you write a bond, your ass is theirs. Okay? Because you just bonded yourself to them. And you do not have the authorization to write any damn bonds. I've told people that for years. To write a bond, you have to be licensed by the SEC, and not one of you guys is licensed by the SEC out here. I'm the closest one to being licensed by the SEC that I know of out here in this area because I took the commodity broker's test, okay, and passed the thing, and I could have been a licensed commodity broker, Series 7. But I didn't. And I should have known a lot of this stuff, but it was too damn well hidden. I was close to it, but I didn't see that basically these are governmental brokerage houses. That was one of the key things right there. And then to see the puts and the calls, well, I'd done those before. And like I said, I had to, when somebody put it to me, I had to buy it. And so our fictional person, when we put it to him, he has to buy it. He has to put out the cash to buy that stock or that instrument back from us that we put to it, the receipt He has to give us the payment for that. Okay. I hope that uh, the people understand the importance of this. Look at that document, okay? If you have any questions, don't hesitate to give me a call. Uh, I'll be here for a little while. I don't know how long, but... Uh, tomorrow morning, basically the state is getting one of my puts uh, for uh, $250,000 on my DD-214. And then uh, probably Tuesday morning, the treasurer of the United States is getting one of my puts for $5 million against my DD-214. Now, they have to process them. We put the put order in to have that addressed to our fictional person who is holding our assets. They can't hold that up. If they do, we will get the FBI on their ass. Because we now know what the FBI really is supposed to be doing. Because this is all about brokerage out here. About the monetary system in this country. So you can take those Excel files, some of them that I had up there before, 
for the receipts, and you turn those into a put. And you put it to your fictional person to pay you for those receipts. He's the one that's holding the assets. And if you don't do these, then they're going to, in a lot of cases, these bar attorneys and these uh, chief financial officers of some of these corporations are going to put an abandoned property claim against these. Scripts that you do not utilize out here. And that's where then the CID would come into play because in some cases this was all done under a fraudulent scenario. But you have to know what you're talking about when you make these allegations. Okay. Go ahead and open it up to uh, Questions, Tom. You there, Tom? I had my mic off. Sorry, Patrick. Yeah. Any any questions, guys? Patrick, you you pretty much answered the questions I I had. Yeah, I, I figured we need to take those uh, Excel files and convert them to a put, so I'll work on that. I've already got my uh, certificate of live birth uh, put made out, so I'll be sending that tomorrow. Yeah, your mortgages, all of those things are basically uh, an instrument, a script, okay, without the T on it, script. Right. Okay, and basically you can turn around and you turn that into a put and you put it back to your fictional person to make the payment either to you or to a third party. Right. These are the set off for a reclaimed value. Right. And does the certificate of live birth, does it have to be an original or can it be a copy of a... It has to be a certified copy of that the state or the county issues. Okay. Just like the DD-214, you have to take that in and have that placed into the county records, and then they will give you certified copies of that as script, okay? Script, okay? S-R-S-C-R-I-P, whatever the hell. Okay. (laughs) Okay. You know, I did see, that. Money. I did that, and they. I said, "Don't I get something, some kind of official document back?" And she said, "No, we don't do that." You don't do what? What did you ask for? I, I wanted it validated, stamped. You know, I wanted it officiated. You basically placed the DD two fourteen on file, record it into the military records. Then you turn around and ask for uh, three, four, five certified copies of it. That's what you asked for. I want three certified copies of it now. You have it on the record, and basically they're not going to charge you anything. So we don't have to go to Bible Records and get additional certified copies from them. We you can don't do it at what? the county where we. We don't have to go to the uh, Bible Records and where we were born to get certified copies of that. We can do that in the county that we're residing in. No, you have to go to your birthing county or to your uh, state Bible Records to get your certificate of live birth. But well, your DD, I, your DD two fourteen, you can put it in into any county in the country. I've got it in two counties right now. 
I've got it in Mahaska County, and I've got it on file in Kicker County. I can go to either place and get certified copies of it. If I wanted to, I could take my original and take it down to Texas and put it into one of the counties down there and get certified copies of it. Wow. I, you know, I asked her for a certified copy because I put it in Erie County, and she said, no, we can't do that. That's ridiculous. But that was your birth certificate, wasn't it? Yeah, a certified That's copy. That's your birth certificate. That's not the certificate. That's not the DD-214. Oh, okay. All right. You can only get your certificate of live birth script from your birthing county or the Bureau of Vital States of the state that you were born in. Right. I did that. Okay. You guys don't listen, to, and then you mix things up, and you don't turn around and ask the question back, well, why? what did I do wrong? Okay? Well, I, I thought have a question. You, could, you could get it, like, mine is in Vermont, so I thought you could um, put it in the county here, say, in New York. No, and, no, no, no. That oh. is a fixture in that state because, okay. see, that is a state stock. Okay. That's a Vermont state stock. So you're getting shares of dividends from your assets in Vermont and all the United States. Okay. Okay. That's why, the, and then see, it's got a universal uh, United States number on it, even though it might start off with a one, two, three uh, for the first three digits. That's identifying it came from Vermont. Mm-hmm. One, four, four. Or whatever, okay? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And basically, that it, you can take that certificate and put it in then as a put into any state treasurer. Okay. Oh, okay, but you can yeah. only put it in as a put, mm -hmm. as an instrument against your fictional person. You do not get it recorded. You put it in as an instrument, a monetary instrument. Okay. To cash okay. it out. Yeah, that was that was my question. You answered it. Okay. Where you had to, if you had to put it in the same state that you got it out of. But okay, I got no. it now. Yeah, you can put it into any state. There's 51 treasurers. You can put it into the court. Okay? They're all brokers. They're all tied into the bar association, the brokerage, governmental brokerage system. Hello. I mean, it's, still, it's like you you set up an account with Payne Weber in New York, and you go out to California, and you walk into the Payne Weber uh, office out in California. You can put an order in that office, too. That's all that this is, this right. governmental brokerage system. They're all across the country. So you can make a transaction wherever you are. As long as you've got the right instrument to make the transaction with. Hello? Can I talk to man? Hi. What? Uh, hey, I'm new to the call here, and where can I find more information on this right here? You have a website or a phone number that I can get? Tom, I'll explain it to you. Go ahead, Tom. Yes, I have you joined the Yahoo group. No, I haven't. You need to go to yahoo.com, sign up an account there, and then uh, go to groups and search for the group, we the people, all one word, underscore shareholders. And then uh, join that group put in your email details, 
and you will get a welcome letter, which you should save and print, which will tell you how to access the files and access the other groups that we have. Would that be we the people underscore shareholders dot com? No. Or just we the people. It's a, it's a, it's a Yahoo, Yahoo group. group. Okay, it's a Yahoo group, and it's you have to go into Yahoo dot com. Okay. Then you get into groups in Yahoo.com, okay. okay. and then you type in uh, the group name, which is We the People, all okay. one word, underscore shareholders. Okay. Probably all gotcha. you have to type in is We the, and it'll bring up a number of them and just pick the, the right ones. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Okay. And then let's very good information here, too. Tom's got the audios up there, too. Okay. Well, on the group, there's links to the audios, and the actual audios are on the backup site, and that's all explained in the uh, welcome email. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, everything that we've been trying to do for the years is right here in all this puts and calls. The surrender that we're trying to do. Mm -hmm. When you put it to your fictional person, you are surrendering that instrument to him. That's who we need to surrender the instrument to, not to the state. The state has no money. Our fictional person is the one that has the assets. The redeeming item of it. They keep redemption is done by calls. When you call a callable item in, you're converting the security. It's you're redeeming it. Call a feature of a security that allows the issuer to redeem the security prior to maturity by calling it in and forcing the holder to sell it back. The holder has to sell it back. We so he has to pay us for it. We give him the security, he has to pay us the money or the bank the money for that security, for that mortgage. Everything we've been looking for is right here on that second page of that document that I had Tom post up today in the definitions. When you really... But it was also pretty much in the definitions that I had up the other day uh, from Valentine's Dictionary. I did. Been there about a week, I think. Got it. Any other questions? Those are the questions I have at this time. Anybody else have some? Um, this is Steve. Do you think that yeah. these uh, government brokers are just working right in line with the uh, the other brokers, or do you think they they actually have like their own separate clearing houses and stuff? They are their own brokerage house. Right. They're not under the control of the SEC. Right. Okay. I heard, that's I heard why they that. have the three. 
law enforcement or brokerage enforcement agencies that are different than uh, the agencies that control Payne Weber and those guys. Right. The SEC yeah. has investigators that monitor them. Yeah, and since it is a secret account, they aren't going to leave a, a trail or a track. They're going to right. It's hidden. Okay, yeah. it's behind the curtain, and we've exposed this. Now that, that these are government brokerage houses. Yeah. And that's what that bar uh, item is. But these guys now, when you put your order in and you put it to your fiction, okay, it's not going to them. They have to broker it. Right. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about this. They have to broker it, and our fictional person has to buy it. Has to buy it back when we put it to them. Right, and isn't there like another rule that's kind of hidden that's like since they took the gold and silver out of circulation, they have to pay all these bills? I mean, it's really, it's really like otherwise we they would to pay be the bills. Or we're paying it. They're a fictional person, but these these secret um, government brokerage houses. I mean, they have our, to pay the bill. Our person, yeah, is sitting in their brokerage account also. Okay. So all of our stuff has to be directed to our fiction, right. to our whore that's sitting in our account. Right. Yeah, I, I get the it. The female factor of our unilateral contract. Mm -hmm. We're the male factor, and our fiction person is the female factor, and she is sitting on our assets. Right. She has to now release those assets into the system when we supply, when we put something to her. Right. Yeah, I get it. In other words, she has to put out. Right. That's a good way. That's that's a good way to understand it, man. It's like you can't make a mistake there. Well, yeah. You know, some people will shut that down because their their puritanical mind just uh, shuts that type of scenario off. Oh, you're talking about sex. No, I'm talking about transactions, yeah. intercourse, right. and basically that's all that commerce is, is intercourse, commercial intercourse. Right. And all that puritanical thinking is just another blanket to hide it with. Yeah, well, it's just by the religious leaders to hide this yeah. stuff away from the people and get you into a false a belief system. Right. Just like they set up the New Testament trying to say that the Old Testament old will was no longer valid and we're going to set up a new will. They did not have the authority to set up a new will. Jesus even said that. Hmm. I do not come to change the law, the will. The will stands, the Old Testament stands as the only valid will out here. So this new will that set up the Church of Rome as the God Almighty shithead here on earth yeah. is bullshit. Yeah. It's all fraud. De demasculated again. Yeah. I mean, people got to start reading between the lines what the hell is the real truth and what is the bullshit. And there's one hell of a lot of bullshit floating around out here. Mm -hmm. Hi, Patrick. I have a question. Yeah, go ahead. I'm reading, um, finally reading the put order. And um, since I was naturalized on uh, New York, Riverhead, Long Island, I have the county and the office there. That's what I would have to use, right? Yes. Okay, thanks. 
Yeah, so that's the account number and everything, and basically you would, could turn around, and after you've uh, been here uh, and you're naturalized uh, seven years, yeah, you can close that thing down. You can call it away and put it over into a commercial account. Okay, thanks. Okay. Yeah, uh, people should go down, and if uh, these things aren't making too much sense to you, go down and pull up the pamphlets. You can even get these online from Payne Weber and uh, H.G. Edwards and some of the other major broker firms out there. Get the pamphlets that they cover about what is a put and a call options. Read those. Also, read about uh, the accounts, okay? Uh, different trading accounts that they have. I'm not telling you to go and sign up with them, okay? Stay the hell away from them, okay? Just try and get additional understanding. But that's where you need to go. You don't go to the codes. Because those codes are strictly for the commercial endeavor side out there and to keep you into that scenario. If any of you guys know any of these other uh, gurus or whatever out here, name persons, try and get this information to them. I've said before that my line is open to any of these guys that want to come and talk to me about this stuff. I've tried to ask for open to them so that basically some of them basically had some ideas and we might get a meeting of the mind in this process. But now my mind is fully set here on what needs to be done. This is a done deal. It's all that over. Yeah. It has to, this has to be done, okay? We have, and see, it's going against our fictional person. And when we put it into these brokers, they have to process it. You go to Payne Weber and you put a call in or a put in. They have to process it if you've got the funds. If you've got the account already set up there. And we've got the account with these government agencies. Now, they have to process our demands. We're the owners of this damn country. Let's get this straight for a change. They work for us. We're the slave master. They're the slave. There's only two types of people in this world. Free men and slaves. And that was in one of the definitions that I have Tom post up there too. Yes. Patrick, I have a question for you. Yeah. Is the birth certificate the script that we need to use for a court case to send to the court? What what's your court case about? It's about a traffic ticket. The traffic ticket is your script. Okay. Yeah. What what account number is on there? The driver's license. Right. Who's it addressed who's it addressed from that basically is coming from your fictional person? The cop wrote. Your name up there at the top, not your name, but your fictional person. So he issued that 
uh, script to you, what you have to do is turn around and send it back and to the, the court and say, put this to the obligator or whatever the hell that term is, and have him pay the bill. And I want the appearance bond at the same time. So part of the ticket goes to them, part of the ticket goes to you. Okay. Pretty simple. Yep, that makes sense. Yeah, but you say, I am putting this to the seller, or, and see, that's really, the, uh, I would use the other term, the O-B-L-I-G-O-R term, sure. because they will know that, and basically that is your fictional person, not, you're not, and see, I tried to do it with the court, saying it should be the one to pay this. No, it's my fictional person that is on the driver's license. He's the one that has that brokerage account sitting at the attorney general's office. Right. Now, see, they wrote bonds against that driver's license to pay the traffic tickets if you came across. If you didn't, then after five years or whatever, then the funds go and get deposited into your master account. No. Nope. See, that driver's license is what, a five-year contract? Six years in Oregon. Six years, okay, six-year contract. So basically, the attorney general's office has that in their account for six years. They go with you that. And then at the end of six years, basically they have to zero their books. See, these are corporations. And in most cases, most of your yearly stuff, like your property taxes and everything else, they have to be processed over because they've written bonds to pay those property taxes, but you didn't turn around and put that back to your fictional uh, person by way of the broker to pay the, the uh, property tax. You paid it out of your back pocket. So now... Uh, that property tax at the end of the year is going to be placed over into your master account. So you want some of that back, you turn around and you do a put by way of the treasurer to draw that out of the master account. Okay. Now, sort of go through that template, the full chart, and uh, make notes to yourself. Listen to this call several times over. Get on to the group site there. Talk it over amongst people. Start setting up some working uh, discussion groups. But try and stay focused on what the shit I'm talking about. You start deviating against anything else, and you're going to, bring in bullshit into the scenario, and you're going to screw yourself. Yeah, I've been studying those definitions that you sent out, those two separate, several-page definitions. Those are really, really good. Yeah, it's pretty simple, okay? And all that extra stuff just confuses everybody else. Yeah. Stop posting stuff that basically does not really have any real bearing on this. We don't give a shit what the hell's happening over in Russia or in Afghanistan or any of these other damn places. We've got to take care of what we can take care of. And that is to get our understanding. Then we can start pulling the funds away from these shitheads out here and start controlling them. Start shutting down some of these damn corporations. Sort of like in the movie V. Hmm. Or in uh, some of the other ones that are out there. Which uh, movie? Uh, uh, surrogates with uh, Bruce, uh, uh, whatever his name is. Bruce Willis? Uh, Bruce Willis? 
Bruce Willis. Yeah. Yes. Surrogates. Okay. Uh, 2009 movie. Basically, start unplugging from the system. Yeah, I downloaded that. I have to watch it. But what do they do with the bond on the driver's license if you surrendered it already? It's probably still sitting there, okay, because we have not called it away from them. Okay? Mm. Surrendered it back to them. We did not do a put or a call on it. That's like all these other instruments, these money orders and everything that I tried to do before. They're no damn good. Even the Secret Service has said that. We were close, but we were not right. So what we were doing did not cause any harm to the country. Because they couldn't be processed. So they went to the ship pile. To the garbage dump. But your driver's license is still there because you have not done a called away to redeem that. And since you surrendered it, if you've got a copy of that, I would send a copy of that in and say that you're calling that instrument away from their for their usage in the brokerage system. You're calling them away from your fictional person and also from the brokerage house. That's what a called away is about. Okay? Yeah, I have copies of all the ones that I surrendered. Any other questions? Um, I don't know if you've covered this, but I know you did say something about taxes. These are unpaid taxes, and they want a response in five, within like five days. Um. Would I just put in for money to cover them? You can turn around and take that instrument itself mm -hmm. and convert it into a put. And you, you put it to your fictional person mm -hmm. by way of the treasurer and have the payment made to uh, whoever, the state revenue or the uh, county uh person or to the United States Treasury. Yeah, to the Department of the Treasury. No, it would be the United States Treasury, not the Department of Treasury. Okay. It was yeah. issued by the Department of Treasury. That's the commercial brokerage house. Okay. Hmm. From the IRS. Yeah. Okay. Let's see there again, basically... Uh, you can basically take that in some cases and uh, say, prove that I owe those taxes because I was not operating in commercial commerce. So you show me what transactions I was doing that have those uh, charges. And see, some of these things are like frivolous charges. We made a mistake, Okay. Yeah, I fully don't understand go. what we were doing with those uh, DD or those 1099s and stuff like that. We thought that's what we were supposed to be usually using, but we made a mistake. Okay, so oh. it's just like at your local check checking account, you overdraft, but you put the money in 
the night before, but it didn't get registered into the account. Now, in a lot of cases, they will wipe that off, that $35 overdraft. <laughs> your continued service. They don't want you to call away and leave them. And see, that's the alternative. If they don't renege on that frivolous Five thousand dollar frivolous filing fee. You're going to pull the plug, and they won't have any more usage of you anyway. Mm. Well, this is all for straight taxes, like twenty five thousand uh, dollars. This is all. You got to like, speak oh, up a little. Oh, this is like twenty five thousand um, dollars for unpaid taxes and fines. Yeah, I know. I got one the other day too. Okay. <laughs> you're not worried. I'm not worried about these things one bit anymore, okay? Uh, okay. What are they going to do? Okay? I'm going to send it in. I'll put a put in. Okay. I'll put it to them. <laughs> okay? Yeah. There's another usage of the word put. And it's called right. put up or shut up. <laughs> okay? Okay. Yeah. You put it to them. Put up or shut up. You prove, I'm putting this back to you. You prove that basically this, because I claim I was not operating in commercial commerce to that amount of money, or basically most of that uh, that you have listed there is all frivolous filing charges. Hey, Patrick. Yeah. I'm sending them um, a letter stating um, I need them to have a notarized uh, copy of the bill of particulars in this case. And I checked off the, um, there's an example of a bill of particulars, uh, if anybody wanted to have it. And I'm sending that with a... For you know, right you now, have... I wouldn't do that, okay? No. For right now, I would just turn around and do a put and pay the thing. Get it out of your hair, okay? Is that for anything? Put, put a put in for the full amount and have, like what I had there, you just turn around and put that on the back, that certificate of live birth statement, okay, that put order. You take that and you put that on the back of that bill. And on the front you would say, C, reverse side for put order. Hmm. Oh, okay. So that's any bill. Somebody's got to mute. Hey, I, I have to mute. Yana, I'm muting you out because you have a terrible amount of noise in the background. I've had to mute out about 20 people so far. Wow. So that's for any bill. You just put the the put order on the back of it. Hello. Yeah, that's that's what he said, but it uh, looks like he got cut off here. Oh. Uh, but then, does it? Where does it go? Oh yeah. <laughs> well, he said, put it to you, give it to the attorney general. Right. And That's the state a, treasurer. The state treasurer gets the puts on the certificate of live birth and the military, DD-214. The attorney general gets all these set-offs and reclaimed values. Okay, I'm back on. My phone died. Sorry about that. Okay. Now, what I was saying about the taxes, just go ahead and take that statement that they sent to you, Okay. That is basically was put to you, okay, as an instrument. You have to put the value on it, and you put the time that it needs to be set off. So you turn it into a regular put, and then you put it back 
in there against your uh, fictional person to make the payment, and you send it back into them, uh, either to the treasurer or to uh, the IRS as a brokerage, and you address them as a brokerage uh, processing agency. Okay. Okay? Yeah. And make it for the full amount that you, instead of having the payment coming to you, delivered to you on that statement that I have, that I had Tom post up there using the certificate of live birth, you would put the payment is to be directed to as a treasury check or whatever to the United States Treasury. Get it out of your hair. You can always come back later when you get your shit together and get on better standing, firmer ground to combat these people. But don't try and fight them right now. Okay? No, you just want them to go away. Yes. Well, you get them out of your sight, and then basically you start building your wall, your defensive wall up there. Patrick? Yes. Um, first question, do you have a website that I can take a look at? Yes, up, Tom's got the website. It's We the People. It's our Yahoo group. It's a group, Yahoo group. Okay. So you have to go join Yahoo or, uh, well, whatever, uh, Google, whatever. I think it's still Yahoo.com. Yeah, Yahoo.com. And then you get into group sites there, and it's We the People, all one word, underscore shareholders. Okay. And then uh, you set up your account there, and uh, Tom has a uh, welcome aboard message that he will send out with all the links and stuff on there to uh, address what needs to go. And he's also got another site that has yes. lots of files on it, too. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you. Have these processes been successful for you personally? We just got to this point, okay? Don't ask that question. But if you really want to know whether this process works, go down to Payne Weber and ask them about puts and calls, whether puts and calls work in their system. You want validation? Yes, I do. They will tell you yes. You buy a put or you do a call and basically it goes against you, you're going to be the one that has to make the payment. So, yes, puts and calls do work. That's the only validation you need, okay? You don't need to wait for me to prove anything to you. I've already proved it because I had to buy a put back. So I know that it works. What did buying the put back cost you? Huh? You said you had to buy speak a Speak up, speak up. I said you had to buy a put back, did you say? Yes. Um, because I was trading on the commodities. Ah. Uh, okay? Okay, so it wasn't commercial redemption. It was uh, your typical commodity in a brokerage account. Yes, it was a private account. Okay. But this, what we're dealing with here is a unilateral contract between you as the male factor and your fictional person as the female factor in this marriage, uni, unilateral marriage. And basically, you are the one to put it to her and she is the one to put out your fiction. Mm -hmm. She's holding all your assets, so she has to put the assets out to you. She is the one that's obligated to buy the things back. Not the United States, not the state of Iowa, not the state of Illinois, whatever. 
your fiction has to buy them back because she is sitting over your real assets. So when you put the put to them or you call the thing away, are you doing that as a living man or woman? That's the only one that can do it. Okay. Uh, so the signature, the autograph... The you name just name. put your name down the way ever, okay? Doesn't Don't matter. play this name game, patriot bullshit game any longer. Put that all away. Doesn't all matter. that patriot bullshit was bullshit. It never accomplished dick shit. <laughs> I can attest to that. I've been running this damn gauntlet for almost 10 years now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. And this is the only, this is what was hidden totally away from us. Okay? Was these puts and calls and that the government is a brokerage house. And all those the Attorney General, the Secretary of State, the Treasurer, they're all bar members. And see, in the state, they have to be licensed by the state, that bar member. So a State of Iowa bar member cannot go and be a bar member in Texas. They have to apply in Texas to be a Texas bar member to do Texas brokerage accounts. But that's all they're doing, is they're doing the broker house, the state of Iowa brokerage house accounts, or the state of Texas brokerage accounts, or the state of California. But Yet all the state treasurers, all the secretary of state, or all the treasurers, all the secretaries of state, and all the attorney generals are all tied back to the attorney general at the United States, the secretary of state at the United States, and the treasurer at the United States. So they're all tied together. They have to be licensed by the United States level in those capacities. Okay. Just like okay. some of the federal judges have to be licensed uh, in certain areas. Go ahead. No, go ahead. That's fine. Thank you. Okay. No, when you think about this stuff, I mean, some of this stuff ought to just start coming to your mind very easily. How can it work? And when you start seeing this, and then you compare it to, like, Payne Weber or something like that, you see, oh, yeah, that's how it really works. But it's been hidden away from us. And they what use you... these colors of law and codes of law to hide it. What gave you that insight that it was a brokerage operation? Huh? What gave you that insight that it was all a brokerage operation? How did it come up? How did it like Well, you basically I got into the definitions, and I forget what the hell I was starting into the other night, uh, that... Uh, five or six page uh, I was into arbitrator and then somehow or other I got into warrant and uh, I forget which word I got from uh, oh yeah warrant I was uh, going through warrants uh, in uh, the testimony uh, court actions and stuff and uh, the very last thing on warrant it said C script S C R I P. Oh yeah. So then I got in the script and basically started going through it and 
going into the other words that uh, uh, led me from one to another, and that's when it got into the puts and the calls and everything else. Okay, I see this. Yeah, see, that's that. what people need to do is follow the dictionary, follow the words, and then look, never think you know what a word means, okay? Unless it's a or the or something like that, yeah, you might uh, know what those mean, but basically anything else, you better be checking out what the uh, law dictionary or uh, even the commercial, the non-commercial dictionaries have it down as. And never trust just one dictionary. Instruments are executed in part or counterpart. The original or principle is so called in English probate practice. A will, okay, can be a script, okay, and basically, like I said, all driver's licenses, everything like that, are wills. Now that was out of Black's Law, out of. Valentine's Law Dictionary, a document representing fictional shares of a stock dividend. Well, you're the stockholder. You're the owner of America, so you have a stock in America, and you have to be paid your dividends. And I've approached the Attorney General's office on this. I said, I'll be glad to pay any taxes that are due once I get paid. But until I get paid, I ain't paying shit. Now, <laughs> that definition in Valentine's goes on. The next sentence really tells a lot. An order on the state treasurer to pay the sum named whenever available funds are in the treasury. So it's an order on the state treasurer. A script is. And what do you have is a script, that certificate of live birth, that driver's license, that ticket. All of these are scripts. But the funds, when available, funds are in the treasury. It's your account that's in the treasury. Your fictional person, that's who the account it was in the treasury, it has to be directed to. Not to the treasury in general, but to your account within the treasury. And then, yes, after that, I got, I got on a holy terror that morning. Mm -hmm. uh, of going through a damn dictionary. I mean, I had probably about 20 of the damn uh, alphabet open for Valentine's, going through all the different words. That's what you have to do. I've said this for years. Until you know the words, you will never understand what is really going on. And then you have to know how to put the words together. Right. And then who to say them to. Yeah, well, I tried to give you that already, so that was a given, okay? Yeah, you might just call me Toto. <laughs> I just pulled the curtain back, okay? I exposed the lizard. And you're barking, bark. too. <laughs> and I'm barking very loud. 
<laughs> okay, I got a question for Toto. I'm just a little barker. <laughs> <laughs> a little woofer, I guess. <laughs> okay, question. Go ahead. Um, I'm looking at the uh, frivolous filing uh, bill that I got, and both sides have writing on it. So I would uh, attach a copy of that uh, put and send it, but um, do I send it to the address that they sent it uh, to tell me to send it back to? Yeah, send it right back to them. Back to them would be put on a I would uh, page. turn around and put a copy of that and uh, send that into uh, the... Uh, if you, if you want to, turn around and send it into uh, the, uh, oh, shit, what the hell, uh, the chief counsel for the IRS. Hmm. Yeah, it's a send payment. Because we know IRS. that the chief counsel would have a bar card. Okay, hmm. chief counsel for the IRS. Yeah, send a copy of that to them say, too, saying I put this put in. Now this put had better settle this damn thing, and I gave you uh, 24 hours. Why did I put 24 hours on my items? Because they operate on an eight-hour day. So you divide 24 hours by eight hours, you've got three days, three working days. Okay. You say three days, and basically they will classify that as 72 hours, and basically then divide that by eight, and you've got nine days plus two days because of the weekend. Uh, so now you've got 11 days before they could have to process anything. Wow. Now, see, these guys are sneaky. Yes. You've got to be able to uh, find all of their... Uh, Places Games. that they will hide things away from you. Okay. They're not putting me on. I mean, yeah, this is like. Yeah, I, mean, I don't know whether you ever went to uh, the state fair or whatever and then went down to the Midway to the Carnies. And, uh, yeah, I mean, basically, they're there to fleece you as much as possible. And that's what all these codes and everything else are. They're there to please the living shit out of you. They're just con artists. Okay, any other questions? No. Now, if you guys know any of these other gurus, please get this out to them, okay? Get them to start looking at this. I mean, if they want quick remedy, here it is. I don't think that anything can be any quicker no. than this. Now that you know where you have to put it in. See, even the Secret Service has told us we were close, but we were addressing it to the wrong person. We needed to address it to our fictional person to be the one, and we had to put it to them. And then when you want out of the system, you just do a calling away. But you have to have a certified copy of the instrument, and you submit that in to the treasurer or, uh, yeah, into the treasurer to call that in. They're the head broker for the brokerage house. Patrick, is that what we would do for my sister who passed away in December? For what? My sister passed away this last December. Is that what we would do for her? The certified copy of the uh, birth certificate? Do a call on that? No. Oh, you're going to have to. You get, what was done in December? 
My sister died. passed away in December. My mom you did got an what? EIN. Huh? You did what? An EIN? No, I'm his sorry. Sister, his, his sister passed away. I'm sorry. Away I don't understand time. what you were saying. Please say it again and try and speak a little louder and a little clearer. All right. My sister passed away this past December. And my mom got an EIN number for her because that was our understanding at the time, what we should do. What should we do now? You should get your shit straight first, and then you can go after your sisters. And as soon as you get your shit straight, then you ought to be able to see what the hell you need to do for your sister. Uh It's going to be the same thing. You're going to call in because you're going to come in either as the executor or one of the heirs in the process. Okay. To claim her estate. So you would be calling in her share of stock. Okay. And at that point in time, that commercial EIN is going to go by the wayside. Right. That makes sense. Yeah, see? That nine-digit number, any nine-digit number out there is a commercial number allowing them access because it's a number that was issued by will. The Social Security number, nine digits. The driver's license, nine digits. The certificate of title to your vehicle, nine digits. The certificate of title to your house, more than likely, nine digits on the thing. Okay? Your EINs, your corporate, your uh, uh, SEO, I don't know what the hell those damn other things are, Uh, EINs that people get uh, uh, out there. Basically, they're still processing back through to your Social Security account, which is your master transmitting uh, number to access your certificate of live birth. Okay. Now, for the DD-214, your master account number is your selective service number. Secret service number. Okay? Just yeah. like your certificate of live birth number. It's a secret service number. Secret stock number, really, is what that one is. But the selective service number is a secret service number, SS. The Social Security number is a secret service transmitting number because it allows the transmitting of the uh, instruments against our real assets, whether it be the DD-214 or the Certificate of Live Birth Master Accounts to place liens or whatever against them. So when we call this away from the commercial world, away from our commercial uh, whore, and take it away from her, our uh, female side of our contract, in our unilateral contract here, and take it away from her, and we're taking it also away from the uh, corporate, the commercial corporate brokerage house. They can no longer broker it. And then that has to be liquidated, and we will get all the tangible assets that are due, just due to us. And then we can turn around and place them back into a non-interest-bearing, non-commercial account with the Treasury and get a different accessing system to that, just like a regular full-blown checking account. And not have to do these puts and calls.
Does that make any sense to people? No. And they'll tell us how to do that after we do the put, right? Huh? And they'll tell us how to do that after we do the put. After, after you do the calling her. away. Right. When you turn around and say, hey, I want to put it back into the treasury. I want to hold so much out here, but deposit the rest back into the treasury. And see what that, when they bring those uh, tangible assets, they will be in the form of gold-backed bearer bonds. For the value, for the tangible value of your account at that point in time. Now, see, on a DD214, you would just call that one away, your appropriate share of that away from the commercial world, away from the usage by the Defense Department, Stop, shut them down. Stop letting them fight wars all around the world. Take the money away from the Defense Department. Okay? And that's what you would do in that regard, and then you would still be getting your military bounty royalties as long as you're alive. Just like as long as you're alive, you would be getting your dividends against your American share of stock. And state of Iowa or state of whatever share of stock. You're the owners of those cop cars. You're the owners of all these uh, buildings out here, governmental buildings. They don't own shit. And I even told the Secret Service that. said, who owns that car out there you're driving? Unless it's a private vehicle, basically I am one of the owners of that vehicle. Hmm. And I'm thinking about going out there and claiming one of the tires as mine. <laughs> Sorry. Got a chuckle out of them. So, Patrick? Yeah. Um, this put and call process that you're describing right now, is this one step short of calling away your birth certificate bond? No, it is the step. It's not one step short. It is the step. It's the only way that you can do this. You have the option from your birth to do this. That's what a stock or a put and call option is. You have the option. It's a one-sided contract. It's not with the state. It's with you and you. It was your option all along. You just didn't know how to exercise your option. That's right. Okay. Well, I guess the question is, why should I do a, a call on a, a tax bill when I can call the birth certificate and put the funds into the Treasury and then use that uh, to settle accounts? No, you're you're mixing the thing up, okay? Okay. You do a put to pay the tax bill, okay? okay? And then when you want to close down your account and move it out of the commercial world, you would do a calling away. Read that document, that template, that flow chart that I have up there. This is my first time on the call, so I'll take a look at it. Okay. <laughs> you need to download that flow chart, and that will explain everything to you, or should. I tried to write it to where a five-year-old could basically handle this uh, if they knew how to read. Uh, I'm or some of them do. Some of them know how to read better than most adults. <laughs> I'm only four years old, so I don't know what I'm going to do. Okay. The flow chart. You got the another year is, to go, huh? Yeah, one more year. <laughs> yeah, the majority. flow chart is very clear.
Patrick, I have another question for you. Yeah. It's a little bit off subject, but it's it's in line with what we've been talking about here. I registered for selective service, but never went into the service. Do I have a DD-214? No. Okay. No. They set up a selective service account, and see, that would be uh, brought in uh, in when you shut down your uh, state account, okay? If you uh, basically registered with the selective service in the same state that you were born in, otherwise you would basically address that as an additional sort of like a driver's license that may have some funds in it. But see, uh, that selective service account really they they put funds into it when you registered because see when somebody gets drafted or goes into the service does the defense department pay for their uniform pay for their boot camp training hell no you're paying for it out of your own damn account you pay for all your schooling out of your own damn account the defense department has no money the government has no money they're bankrupt. They have to utilize our assets, so they're writing bonds against our certificate of live birth account and a lot of the initial funding under the selective service number. You now, no after you get a DD-214, then you start receiving military land royalty account uh, dividends. And see, that's one of the oldest laws on the books is uh, the military bounty, the extra share that the ones that serve in the military and gave to the land, they get something back in return, an extra 10%. Okay. So, That's documented in the Bible. It's also documented by Hammurabi. It's documented by Caesar. It's documented every every place out there, even uh, in by Abraham Lincoln in uh, uh, the statutes uh, back in his time. Okay, to where a guy was supposed to get a mule on uh, 160 acres or 640 acres or whatever the hell it was, a plow and a mule and. Uh, uh, Whatever. Forty acres. But see, they took the land away from the people, and see, they took the land away from the military. But all the public land out here has to be registered to a living person. So all that public land is not registered to the corporation; it's registered to the military personnel out here. And they are the ones that are getting the royalties from the usage of that public land because it's in their name. Hmm. So, Patrick, if I call away my DD-214, are they going to send me a check? You can put in a put for so much. That's what I did for 250000 at the state and $5 million at the federal level. I used a copy of my DD-214, but I made it a put. Uh, okay. And then when I call in my DD-214 later on, I will set up it over into a non-interest-bearing checking account at the Treasury because I will still want it sitting there so that it can receive its dividends, its royalties. And then when I die, my heirs can come in and claim that away. Because that now is in a private uh, treasury account. I hope they give me a debit card. (laughs) 
Why do you want to try and keep everything in the commercial world, okay? Why not just get some funds out and put it in a damn cookie jar and bury it in the backyard? <laughs> okay? Bad. Make your own damn system. Stop relying on other people to do things for you. You handle, you get so much cash out, and then you protect it. You hide it away. Hell, you can hide a cookie jar in every 51 states. <laughs> the 51st state is the one there in Washington, D.C. Yeah, I mean, they see, my sister had a damn uh, stake in a gold mine out in Colorado. Supposedly, the neighbor came over there and basically was uh, running around with one of those gagger counters or whatever the hell, or a uh, uh, deal, and basically found a bag of uh, $25 gold pieces. Of course, it's all hearsay, but I don't know. But, see, that's the way people used to do it. They buried their damn cash. And then if they got back to it, they had it there for them. Well, basically these guys died and didn't get back there, so somebody else found it. But you don't need to operate in the commercial world. Stay the hell away from that. You get into a bank or anything like that, after you get out of this system, you're a complete idiot. That's my opinion. You can take it for whatever it's worth. Okay, any other questions? Going once, <laughs> going twice. Patrick, do you know what the dollar value on a DD-214 would be if I've been out of the service for 40 years? No. That's why you do a call, because on a call, you do not put a value down. But you only put down how much ever you want, okay? They will tell you whether you've got that much in the account. And basically you should have, uh, at the rate they've been doing all this stuff with the public lands and everything out here, we should have at least quite a few million dollars in that DD-214 of 40 years. Yes, mine is 40 years also. So I just put in for uh, 250000 at state and then $5 million at the federal level using a DD-214. How about the birth certificate? The birth certificate, same thing there. You just do a put for so much, okay? You're not going to – I mean, if your birth certificate was worth $3 billion – you're not going to put it in for $3 billion. <laughs> Why not? Because you're not ready to handle $3 billion. You don't have a safe or anything like that set up. And see, they would turn around and give that to you in bearer, uh, bearer bonds. And that means a bearer bond, anybody that bears that bond can cash it. It's not in your name. It's a bearer bond. So you don't want something like that, but basically, yeah, you can put it in for $250,000, turn around and start uh, building a defense system up, and then move the assets over in the treasury. 
that is real secured in their system, in the non-commercial side, okay, it's not like a bank. When the banks close, they're closed. And they're going to close down. But the Treasury will always be there. Are you talking But they will shut down the commercial side of the Treasury. Well, let me ask you, when you talked to the Secret Service folks and they said we were close, um, did they say that why it was we were close and exactly No, they happened? didn't. No, they're not going to say anything like that. Ah, uh, they're chickens. And they, they didn't really say that to the individual. They said uh, that to the banks, that basically these cannot be charged as uh, fraudulent instruments, that they are close to being right. No, we just didn't have it addressed to the right person, to our fiction, in what I was doing. The money orders and stuff, we were sending them and having them basically being addressed that the Treasury had to make the payment. Well, yes, the Treasury does have to make the payment, but by way of our fictional person. That was how close we were. And see, as long as you have not caused any harm, they cannot charge you with any infraction. Well, what constitutes harm? When you write bonds against... And see, you are not a licensed bond writer. And that's what 90% of the people out there in the Patriot community that are in jail is because they wrote bonds. And then they tried to pass them off and sell them as negotiable instruments in the bond world. And see, you need to have a license by the SEC to write bonds or by the state insurance division. They're also licensed to write bonds. State bonds. And see... Those bonds that these guys were writing, they now became an obligation of the Bureau of Public Debt. So you are harming the commercial world when you should have just been doing a put and drawing the funds out of your own damn account. Are you saying that uh, in the case of a court case, if you get a a summons or a warrant or some other kind of uh, security that's created in the court system that you can put those to the account just as you would anything else? Yes, you put them to your fictional person, okay? It's a put. So you put it to your fiction and then have the court, okay? That court is nothing but a brokerage court. They're all bar members, so they're brokers, just like Payne Weber. But you submitted in that your fictional person has to make the payment as a put. So you put it to him. Or her, or whatever you want to call your fictional person. Mm -hmm. Would that work for general judgments? Huh? 
Would that work for general Speak judgments? Speak up a little. Would that work for general judgments? General judgment of what? I say a credit card suit. You do. Uh, you take the credit card payment and you turn around and you submit that in. Okay, and basically, if it's uh, on a yearly basis, I would turn around and submit it into the attorney general's office through the consumer complaint division. Now, I'm talking about a judgment awarded to somebody, um, say a collection agency on a credit card debt. Can you take the general judgment, which has a dollar figure on it, and put it? in order to satisfy Well, how in the hell did you get involved into a contract with a debt collector? Okay? You don't have a contract with the debt collector. You have a contract with the with the uh, credit card company. Right? Where's the contract you have with that third party debt collector? Well, assuming it's the... Do you know how you got in the contract with that third-party debt collector? Because you communicated with them. Yeah, I understand that part, Patrick. What I'm asking is if a court issues a judgment and has a dollar figure on it and is signed by the judge, uh, can you put that as you would any other, quote, obligation, unquote, in order to satisfy You turn around, you get a certified copy of your certificate of live birth, you turn around and you do it, one of these puts that I have up there, and you make the payment to that credit card company. Get it out of your hair, okay? Got it. Thank you. Okay. These things are not that hard. You just have to think about and basically, get the flow chart, get the templates uh, out there of the puts that I had up, read the definitions, and basically then you should be set to go. Okay? Yeah, I'm looking at the flow chart right now. Okay. Anybody else? Okay, go ahead and call it tonight, Tom. Okay, Patrick. Okay, talk to you later. Yes, thank you. Okay, good night. Okay, bye.